Hi ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the top five most common uh, diseases that affect catfish. So make sure you stay attentive so that you understand all these uh, diseases I am about to talk about. And uh, also, you should also note that in this uh, video, I'm going to be telling you their names the symptoms to look out for and also some of the way out by which you can combat these diseases especially if eventually have it on your farm so this method is going to uh, this video rather is going to discuss the top five uh, common diseases that affect your catfish so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to my channel and also leave a like on this video if you derive value from watching it. And um, let me not waste your time. Let's just dive into it. The first disease I'm about to talk about is gill rot. I think I've already made a video on how to cure this gill rot disease. You can click up here to see how to, to cure it. But... Uh, in other ways, I'm going to be talking about it. So, G rot is caused by bacteria, which is called the Flexibacter columnaris. It affects different levels of catfish, just like the ones you can see. This is G rot that affected them. Can you see them? Some have died, but I've already administered the medication to them, and that is why this water is like this. This is more or less like a cured water for them. So it affects the fingerlings, it affects the juvenile, and can even affect the adults, the jumbo. I hope you understand. So here are some of the symptoms you can look out for. You observe that there is a black G filament covered with mud or mucus, just like this one you are saying. Then the G offset rates drip off. There's going to be inflammation and hyperemia inside the upper cooler. Those ones are big words. You don't eventually know that, but just take a look at this. They are suffering from G rot. Can you see it? So, in order to treat it, I've already made a video on how to treat this disease. The second one I'm going to be talking about is coliosis. And this is a skeletal deformation of the fish body, which is caused due to high concentration of heavy metal and acid in the water. When there's heavy metal and acid in the water, uh, then scoliosis is bound to occur. This can also be caused by mineral deficiency like calcium, phosphorus, vitamins, especially vitamin C, and can also result to skeletal deformation of fishes, your fries, your embryos, and even the fingerlings. So, in order for you to prevent this type of disease, you have to block the water tanks. The newly constructed fish tank must be allowed to cure for up to five weeks with either animal manure or other means. If you are using a concrete tank, you can cure it with banana leaf so that um, the concentration of these metals that is present in cement will not affect them you can as well treat your water i hope you understand so that is basically that and if it's um eating pond you are using you can actually sterilize that eating pond with industrial salt industrial salt so and also the, the feed you are going to be feeding your fishes with must be rich in uh, both calcium and phosphorus since calcium is responsible for 
the bone formation so you have to make sure the feed is rich in both content and also in vitamin C I've already made video on uh, the vitamin I use on my own farm both at the archery level and also on the grow out level so you can go and watch it the terms I'm about to talk about is what we call the running horse disease. This is another disease common in your cat's fish and it affects the fish. Usually when you see your fish that swims violently in groups around the side of the pond, it shows they are having this type of disease called the running horse disease. And how do you prevent this? Make sure the density of fry, that is the density of the little ones, the fingerlings and the likes, must be controlled. And how do you control it? You drain the, the water daily. Drain the water daily. Then another disease that affects catfish is what we call the crabfish. This is common in catfish, especially if they're using the eating pond, is very very common. And the cause of this disease is not yet understood, unlike uh, the other diseases I've already told you. And part of what could lead to uh, this crackhead disease is uh, when you overfeed your, your fishes without adequate water supply, there's going to be what we call imbalanced nutrients. Because the feed you feed them will not be able to digest which eventually will lead to this crack air disease. So, any fish that is affected by this disease will show the following symptoms. The abdomen will be big due to the septicemia and hemorrhage. That is one of the, uh, what do we call it? One of the symptoms, another uh, symptom is that their eyes will pop out. Their eyes will pop out. Of course, this disease can be detected at early stages, and also the affected fish shows reddish lateral line on the skull. When you see their edge, the edge will show reddish. Uh, something on the on the edge. So as soon as you see this symptom, you can do the sampling method in order to reduce the water and also make sure the water is replaced. So generally, the fish recovers after a few weeks. After which feeding can be increased little by little. So when you observe your fishes are having this type of disease, the crack egg disease, what you have to do is try to reduce the, the food you give them. So once you reduce the feed, also increase the water supply. And also if you have the opportunity to drain the water, Make sure you drill it often so that uh, all the contamination in the water as well as the dirt will be removed. Then you can now increase the feed gradually. So, but at the final stage, if you do not do this quickly, <laughs> then the, the score will break. And when the skull of your fish breaks, that is death. So make sure you avoid search. Make sure you avoid search. As you can see, what these ones are suffering from is not crack air. It's actually what we call the G-rot. 
and then administer the medication. So, basically, what I am talking about today, I'm reading it from uh, my other gadgets. It's not uh, a write-up from me. I'm only trying to explain it. So, in case you you feel bored, I'm so sorry, but I just have to bring this to your notice so that you watch out for it. I hope you understand. So, guys. That is basically what I want to show you on the, the common disease that affects catfish. And another one is the uh, gas bubble disease. This is caused by oxygen saturation in the water, resulting to rapid increase in algal photosynthesis. Small bubbles accumulate on the fish, intestines, skin and filaments causing the fishes to float and how do you prevent this you you prevent it by adding fresh water and um, also avoid this gas uh, bubbling avoid it so when you see something like that you can actually add salt industrial salt or even the table salt you can add it depending on the quantity or the the how, how big your pond is if you are using something like this you can actually use table salt but if you are using the earthen pond industrial salt will be suitable so okay i think i have one last one here which is uh anemia disease affected fishes are black with big head and small bodies <laughs> just like kwashioko when they are poorly malnourished you know kwashioko affects human beings so this is attributable to overcrowding and food shortage just like kwashioko and the prevention is avoid overcrowding and the adequate feeding is advisable so if you are to administer any medication to your fishes do it within three to five days and if you do not see any difference i think you will have to consult your veterinary doctor yeah so that they put you through on the next thing to do but make sure you tell them the history of what you have already used for the fishes so that you don't eventually um, give them the same medication over and over again so that is what i want to show you actually this video is long but i want to believe you are going to derive something spectacular from it thanks for watching i love you bye for now